Hello, everyone. I'm Lisa Booth, along with Cheryl Cassoni, Jason Chaffetz, and Tom Shalou, and welcome to The Big Weekend Show. The big story tonight, Donald Trump and RFK Jr.'s anti-establishment power move. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I'm proud of Bobby. You want to know the truth? I don't think I've ever introduced anyone that got applause like he just got. I must tell you. The crowd goes wild for the unlikely duo teaming up to take on the swamp. Fox News correspondent Lucas Tomlinson is live at the White House tonight. Lucas. Well, good evening, Lisa. Let's get right to the videotape. Here's Donald Trump alongside Bobby Kennedy Jr. last night in Arizona. For the past 16 months, Bobby has run an extraordinary campaign for President of the United States. I know, because he also went after me a couple of times. I didn't like it. His candidacy has inspired millions and millions of Americans, raised critical issues that have been too long ignored in this country, and brought together people from across the political spectrum in a positive campaign, grounded in the American values of his father, Robert Kennedy, a great man, and his uncle, President John F. Kennedy. Bobby and I will fight together to defeat the corrupt political establishment and return control of this country to the people. RFK Jr. says he would have won the election if the system was more honest. I got a call from the president, and we talked. We had a very good talk. And then he invited me to come see him. And we talked about, not about the things that separate us, because we don't agree on everything, but on the values and the issues that bind us together. And one of the issues that he talked about was having safe food and ending the chronic disease epidemic. Our children are now the unhealthiest, sickest children in the world. Don't you want healthy children? And don't you want the chemicals out of our food? Don't you want the regulatory agencies to be free from corporate corruption? That's what President Trump told me that he wanted. Kennedy added this is not the Democratic Party of his uncle and father. Lisa? Thank you, Lucas. I feel like I should start. Should, I, should we start calling him Bobby? <laughs> Make it look like we're on the first name basis. Yeah. Um, you know, Jason, okay, so the Trump campaign put out a memo after this talking about, you look at states like Arizona, if you looked at the 2020 turnout model, uh, the, the net vote gained in Arizona would be over four, 41,000 votes, four times Biden's uh, margin in 2020. How significant is this endorsement? Oh, I think it's very significant. I think it tells us a lot about the Democratic Party of today. Did you ever think you'd see a Democratic Party that was rejecting a Kennedy, for goodness sake, and the idea that a Kennedy would join forces with a Donald Trump, I think it's a big deal. He wasn't going to get the majority of the votes, but he's probably going to get that last 5%. The people are disaffected maybe by both parties that feel a little offended by how Democrats ran their process in nominating somebody. It wasn't a fair fight. They sued Kennedy every single chance they could get. They kept him off the ballot. They, they did not uh, uh, allow him to participate in a fair, fair way. And there's a lot of people that are offended by that. So that last 5%, the, the bit that actually makes the difference in election, I think this is a huge win for Donald Trump that will translate in November. You know, Jason, you, you touched upon the realignment in American politics. And Cheryl, I want to get to you after we listen to why RFK Jr. decided to endorse Donald Trump. Let's take a listen. Don't you want a president who's going to get us out of the wars and who's going to rebuild the middle class in this country? And he told me that he wanted to end the censorship because the whole basis of American democracy is the free flow of information. Can you think of any time that you can look back in history and say that the people who were censoring were the good guys? They're always the bad guys because it's always the first step down that slippery slope to totalitarianism. Don't you want a president who's going to protect America's freedoms? And I want to ask you again, don't you want a safe environment for your children? And don't you want a president that's going to make America healthy again? 
Thank you all very, very much, and God bless you, and God bless America. So he talks about how the Democratic Party has now left behind working class voters. Now it's about censorship, corruption, big pharma, big everything. Um, you know, we've seen this realignment in American politics where the Republican Party has kind of become the party of the working class, the, the left now, yeah. the party of elites. So how does a Kennedy endorsing a Republican sort of further solidify that realignment? Well, I think it kind of goes with what we're already seeing with the Trump campaign. If you look at the UAW, for instance, you know, you may have the leadership of the union uh, support Kamala Harris, but the membership is a completely different story. And we've seen that that's going to be the vote that's likely going to go Republican. But, you know, the Wall Street Journal editorial board made a really good comment, uh, excuse me, a line about kind of why you saw this rejection by the Democrats of RFK Jr. and Nicole Shanahan. I mean, they believe that, that the campaign, the Democrats play dirty politics to keep them suppressed. A Kennedy, uh, to both of your points. And what they write, I think this is interesting. He says, look, he says, Democrats can now blame themselves, the editorial board writes, uh, for the endorsement, says Mr. Kennedy might have dropped out and not endorsed another candidate. So if, if, if Arizona and Georgia in particular, if the story changes because of RFK's position now with the Trump campaign, they only have their self to blame. Well, and talking about that dirty politics, Tom, I thought, you know, RFK Jr. had this zinger, in my opinion, where he's talking about how Biden mocked Putin's 88 percent landslide uh, and mocked the fact that Putin owns the Russian press and that he kept opponents off the ballot. And then... You've got the DNC doing what they've been doing and, you know, the Biden campaign or Democrats trying to push Trump off the ballot before. Yeah. So it's know. a very interesting number. What did you say? Eighty eight percent. Well, that was, yeah, with Putin's landslide in the Russian election. Well, that 88 percent is alarmingly similar to the, the percentage of mainstream media that is actively supporting the Democrats. We saw that uh, they, they did a study this week that the media is somewhere around 85 percent positive stories for Kamala. 85% negative stories for Trump. So they're actively campaigning for the Democrats at this point. And so when RFK talks about uh, press freedom, it's in, the, it's in the same breath as talking about the First Amendment, about people's ability to express themselves and to say what they need to. At this point, the Democratic Party believes that freedom of the press is the freedom of the press to censor us, because the press is right now in with big tech, and they're deciding what can and can't be said about things. The second big thing RFK is on about is medical freedom. So medical freedom and freedom of the press. I don't know what I want him to be in charge of, the FCC or the CDC, but put him in charge of one of them. I, and let's get them. All right. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.